I know you haven't got a lot of time. You're a lawyer, so always busy, busy, busy. No, I'm not a lawyer. I'm an, a registered immigration consultant in Canada. So the difference between us and lawyers is we do everything. We, we are allowed to do everything that lawyers do regarding immigration, okay. except we're not allowed to go to court. Okay, that's very interesting. So quickly tell me how long have you been in Canada for? So in 18 days, we will be in Canada for 13 years. Oh, that's a long time. Yeah. And are you enjoying it? We love Canada. I think Canada is one of the most privileged, one of the most open armed countries to immigrants. Mm. And I'm talking about immigrants from anywhere in the world. I see there's quite a diverse bunch of people in Canada, Marty. It's yeah. not, you know, it's not a one-sided thing. It looks like it's very diverse. It's very, very diverse, yeah. My one question before we get into the visa options. I see a lot of people entering and it's a bit of a concern for me. Do you yeah. see that there's a lot of people entering the country on a refugee thing? You know, there's even videos telling you how to do it. Isn't that a bit of a concern? It's not as easy as people say. It's the same when people jumped on the bandwagon. Everyone's going to New Zealand because New Zealand's going to accept all South Africans as refugees. Mm. It's not that easy. Mm. Refugee status is defined by the United Nations. The United Nations decides who is eligible to become a refugee. Those videos that you see, and some are made by South Africans, mm. ask them, did you apply for refugee status in any country? And then you ask them, have you been approved? or were you refused, or were you sent back to your country? Mm. The issue with the refugee status is, well, applying for refugee status is, if you, and that's pertaining to all first world countries in the world, if you apply to become a refugee in a first world country, I don't know about third world countries, so I've never dealt with any of that. Yeah. You're not allowed, or, or not, well, you can if you want to, but no other country is going to accept you after you've been refused. So if you jumped on the band and on the wagon and you applied for refugee status in New Zealand and they come back and they refuse you and you've got to go back to South Africa, I doubt that any other country is going to yeah, allow you to got for any kind of visa. Yeah. So okay. it's not that easy. Mm. All those people that walk across the border, I think something like, and I'm not sure, this is just, I'm not sure, this is just a ballpark figure. Mm. I think something like 70% of them are deported again. Oh, you, you see, that's the thing, a person, and people need to know about it. Because it worries yeah. me when there's information like that on the internet and on YouTube, and people haven't done their, their studies. They don't know. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. I mean, not that I'm ever intending on becoming a refugee. I'm definitely not going to pack my bag and walk abroad, you know, over a border. I would die before I do that because that's scary. They, they'll they lock you up <laughs> and send you and, to and and I think the essential thing to keep in mind when you do apply for refugee status, if you are approved, say for instance, you're approved in Canada and you go back to South Africa, Canada may cancel it. Absolutely. Because you applied, you applied because of the situation in South Africa. So if you go and visit your family because you miss them, yes. you go and visit and you come back, the border official is going to ask you, so why did you go and visit? Oh, I miss my family. Well, you were approved because you said it was dangerous, dangerous. to live in South Africa. So did the situation change? No, no, it didn't. 
Yeah. So they like, can, if he wants to, he can cancel and revoke so, your refugee status. There was a case in Canada not too long ago, well, it might be a couple of years ago, of a guy that were approved on refugee status. And then a couple of years later, they um, canceled it. Because he lied. Yeah, well, and, and I know about that case because it was, ugh, I was living in Cape Town and I think it was in our newspapers. Yeah, so, he lied. Yeah. He, uh, he as well, and I don't know all the facts about it, but as far as I know, he submitted false um, proof of why he should be approved as a refugee. And then mm -hmm. the South African government complained about it to the, the Canadian government. So the Canadian government had to investigate it. Yeah. And then it, it was revoked. Oh, it doesn't work that way. You've got to be so honest and so transparent. So, Marty, yeah. what are the main visa options for South Africans? Oh, there are many. I think right now there may be more than 100 different visa options. To and Canada. what are the most used or most... Um, what are the South Africans using most? You know, I know you can go study and you've got this visa, that visa, but what are the, what are the, I wouldn't, I don't want to say easiest ways, but what is the most common ways for South Africans to go to Canada? Because it's difficult to get into Canada. It's difficult. Yep. Um, I think the most common way to get in is on a work permit. Mm. But then once again, there are so many different work permits. It's not as easy, go on the website, apply for a work permit. There are just too many factors to take in consideration. Like if you want to apply for permanent residency after you've landed on a work permit, if you apply for the wrong work permit, and it depends on the province, you may never be able to apply for permanent residency sure. if you've chosen the wrong pathway. Mm. So it's very important. And I know that there's people that go there without talking to a professional like yourself. Um, my advice, and I'm sure you would say the same, the number one go-to is speak to someone that deals with these things on a, on a daily basis. What I always tell people is do at least one consultation, not a free online assessment. Those free online assessments tell you nothing. Yeah, doesn't mean it tells it. everyone you qualify because most people could or may qualify for immigration to Canada. Yeah. You just have to find the right pathway. So I always advise people to do at least one consultation. During the consultation, if you if you deal with someone that knows and that are really wanting to help you, they will tell you what to look out for and what to, because that's part of our license. We've got to be ethical. Mm. If I'm not ethical, if I tell you something that I'm not allowed to tell you, I can lose my license. Yeah, absolutely. So um, talk to someone Try to talk to an individual, not a big company. These big companies use agents. Agents are not trained to do immigration. They go on the website like the general public. They do the come to Canada wizard. Anyone can do it and it's for free. But then the, again, the wizard will tell you, you may be able to apply. You may be eligible to apply, mm. but it's not going to tell you which which uh, immigration stream is going to work for you. Yes, what is going to so, work for you, yes. So the big companies use agents. They do that come to Canada wizard. They let you know, you pay me $2,000, $5,000, $10,000. I've spoken to young guys that has paid 300,000 rands because they, they're coming, they're on their way to Canada and nothing happened because I, they use some of those big yeah, companies. There was actually on the internet, not a, not a long time ago, maybe two, three years, and recently as well, 
where people paid a fortune and they thought their papers were all in order and being processed and a lot of money. I'm not even talking three, four thousand rand. I'm talking about probably tens of thousands of rands. And it's all fraudulent. Yeah. So yeah, I feel I feel very sorry for those people. And you know, it's because they do those free assessments and then it tells you you qualify. And then they start calling you and they do all kinds of things to get your money and you gone now i can't hear you hello yes you're back so Sorry, Mike, i just want to tell you as a matter of interest because i'm doing what i'm doing now i've suddenly on facebook i'm getting all these ads of people wanting to offer me all sorts of stuff that i know it's because of the algorithm and because yeah. I'm doing research on all these things, I'm getting all these sorts of offers about people saying, come, you or you know, you can come to Italy and France and you name it. And I'm thankfully, I know that there is a certain way of doing things. You've got to work through the right people to get there. So tell me quickly, do you do um like conference things or have you got you know some of these lawyers have got a, a zoom conferencing call where they talk a little bit about the pathways etc do you offer those things or not really yeah i try to do it once a month and i usually post the uh, flyers on my facebook pages okay. um but once again, it's just in general. Um, mm -hmm. It may give you a little bit of information, but it still depends on your own background. Yes, yes. Uh, it, it often happens that people were advised by friends or family in Canada yet, or people in South Africa that never has even set a foot in Canada or anywhere else in the world. Yeah. And they tell you, oh, just go on the website and do it yourself. Ooh. So, um, you can do it there are when i do the consultation i've advised many people you can do it yourself your application is straightforward just look out for this and this and this yeah there are people there are young ones that they can really do it themselves yeah and you know what there are other people that really need my help i can't help any everyone i can't yes. it's impossible so i prefer or not prefer but I would rather help people that are in more difficult situations yeah. than those young ones that have straightforward applications. They can do it themselves. They can go on the website. It's easy to do it themselves if they qualify yeah. for a certain stream. But we, I do uh, webinars, whatever, once a month. But it's just, once again, just a general background. Yeah. Um, before COVID, I went to South Africa once a year, and we usually did a, a month road trip through South Africa, and we hosted um, seminars almost every day in different towns and cities in South Africa. Yeah. But, I mean, with, right now, it's almost impossible to mm -hmm. do it. Tell me quickly, Marty, is there a cutoff for people age-wise that wants to or that is looking at immigrating to Canada? Older people, are they sort of... No? It, it, it depends on the province and it depends on the immigration stream that you're going to apply for. Some programs um, have a cut cut off of 35 years oh, but that's for very specialized specialized young guys and then most of the you stop getting points at, a, at usually at 49 years old you stop getting points mm. but they aren't there isn't really a cut off uh, age okay. it depends and then once again if you come over and work permit it just depends are the employer going to offer you a job if you're older or not yeah so you apply for a work permit only when you have a job or don't you yeah, yeah. you can only 
well, you can apply for a, for a work permit if you want to without a job offer, but you, they will refuse it. So you've got to have an approved awesome. uh, job offer from mm -hmm. an employer that has been approved to mm -hmm. employ a foreigner. Right. Well, you know and, what? <clears throat> and I think one thing that you should keep in mind too, people should keep in mind is some people believe that because they have a job offer, the work permit is going to be approved. That's not true. Mm. You've got to be eligible. Yeah, it gets very complicated. So look, we can talk about this until we blew in the face. At the end of the day, a person's got to, and I understand what you're saying, a person has to have a consultation with you or with someone at least, you know, that yeah. knows the ropes. Marty, what is your biggest advice to anyone looking at Canada per se? From South Africa. I'm talking the, about the serious people. I'm not talking about the youngsters yeah. that wants to go play and, you know, do their little thing and travel the world. I'm talking about people that are serious about making a move, the older people, they might be people with families. What is your biggest advice to those people? If I had to immigrate today with all the knowledge that I have and with all the experience through all the people that landed in Canada, I would say, try to land in a smaller city uh, where there are a little bit of a little group or some South Africans, you won't be necessarily best friends, but at least they will be your support group. If you don't have deep pockets loaded with money, check out where you go, check out the living costs. Yeah. Most people want to go to Vancouver and Toronto. Mm -hmm. Check out the living cost. Your monthly um, rental or payment on accommodation could be anything between 70 to 85 percent of your income every month Ooh. so if you don't have the pocket don't consider big cities it's too expensive it's just like in south africa yeah if you're a young one with no money how are you going to settle in cape town yeah it's almost impossible it is so Try to find a city, and in Canada, cities are, are places with more than 10,000 people, so it's relatively small. Try to find a more affordable place, settle, find your feet, do it research on Canada. Canada is almost nine times the size of South Africa. Yeah, it's massive. So use or, or live in a, in a a more affordable place while you have a job and in smaller cities it's easier to find a job than in bigger cities um, and then use a year or two to find out where you really want to go and by that time you should have more money to move and maybe move to one of your wherever you want to be in Canada yeah but make sure you choose a city where you have a little bit of a support group there are people that land with a little bit of money and then at some point the money runs out and then you need the South Africans to support you. Yeah. And believe me, most South Africans in Canada will support you. Yeah. Well, I most South that. Africans yeah. reach out and they help you. I've seen that there's a huge amount of people that are just so, their hearts have opened up completely because yeah. they've been down that road, they understand. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. They know what yeah. it's about. And then the other thing that I, I feel is very important is it's a new life. It's a new la country. It's a new place. You've got the opportunity to turn over and start on a clean page. Mm. Make use of that opportunity. All right. Leave your B BS behind. Come over, change your attitude, change your life, and be as happy as all of us are. Yeah, fantastic. Marty, I'm going to get from you your links to your Facebook page, etc. I'm going to put it in this video at the bottom of it. 
with the disclaimer that I've spoken about. Yeah. So that people can reach you. I actually spoke to a guy that made use of you and um, he didn't want me to disclose his name. He went over yeah. on an agricultural visa and then he uh, changed over to a um, business visa or a, he bought a business or something. I don't know what it's called. Um, and he said he made use of you and he was so happy with your service. And that's how I started, you know, that's how we got onto, onto Marty Kruger. But now I see you on all sorts of platforms. But I still, I'm going to put your link below so that anyone that is thinking of Canada <laughs> can go and click on there and hopefully they listen to this video and understand that it is important to have a conversation with you before they even think of, of moving abroad. So that would be fantastic. Thank you very much, Jeannie, and good luck with your um, search to a new life. <laughs> thank you so much, Marty. And I thanks for the talk. Okay. Man. Have thank a you. lovely Bye. day. Bye. Thank you, too. Bye.